Okay, so thank you guys for joining us for today's um, teaching and learning and UX working group combined call. Today is Wednesday, February 1st. And um, we, uh, we decided uh, a few meetings back when we were scheduling out some of the agendas for, um, for the first few um, meetings this year that uh, a lot of folks wanted to see a little bit more about how to build stuff in Xerti. So um, kind of as a follow up to the um, session that we did in December where we actually played the escape room, the Sakai escape room um, as a as an activity. Um, so now we're going to see a little more about how to actually build an escape room activity using Xerti. So that's our main item for today. Um, but before we get started, we'll start off with just a few announcements. Um, so uh, Sakai Camp is next week, February 6th and 7th. That's Monday and Tuesday. It's going to be here in Orlando. We're doing an in-person Sakai Camp for the first time since COVID. So that's kind of big news. Um, it's going to be a full day of meetings on the 6th and the 7th, so from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, we'll have meetings running throughout the day. And uh, for those that are coming in person, it's going to be at the Hyatt House and Hyatt Place across from Universal Studios. Um, for those of you who are not coming in person, we will have um, Zoom links available to join the meeting remotely if you want to pop in for part of the meeting. I don't expect that folks will stay for the whole day, um, but you're certainly welcome to join at different points throughout the day. I put the link there to the, um, the meeting agenda, and uh, that's got the Zoom links in it as well as the agenda as we construct it. So. Um, Sakai Camp has traditionally been an unconference. We kind of build the agenda as we go when we get there. Um, so I've, I've roughed out an agenda for day one, but that may change. Um, and we will be doing breaks and lunches throughout the day. So if you um, happen to join and the, there's nothing happening, it could be that you caught us on a break. But, um, but again, feel free to pop in virtually. Um, at any point throughout the the two days when we'll be um, sort of broadcasting in Zoom um, if you'd like to participate uh, in Sakai Camp. So and, and feel free also to if there's things that you wanted to add to the agenda or comment on, um, you can comment on the, the agenda docs. Those are all open for anybody to to add their feedback. Um, so let's see, I think those are our main announcements for right now, unless anybody else has anything that you'd like to add or announce. Nope. Okay. So we will go on with sort of the main event then um, for the escape room building basics. So we're not going to have time to build an entire escape room. Um, it, an hour is just simply nowhere near uh, enough time. But we can get started and I can show you guys a few basic kind of strategies to building it um, the way I put it together for the, the one that I built for the virtual conference. So um, what I have done is I made a few demo accounts for people if you didn't already have an account on our Xerti instance. I know some of you probably do. You may have, have one from the workshop um, that's still there if, if you remember what it is, or maybe your institution is looking into a pilot, in which case you probably got an, an updated password um, recently. So if you already have an account, you can log in with your existing Xerti account to follow along. Um, as we go, or if you need an account, let me know in the chat. I created a few demo ones for today for people who want to just kind of follow along and maybe don't already have an existing account. Uh, but this is the address that you'll want to go to to log in. It's um, zerti.longsite.com slash zerti online toolkits. So uh, you can click on that link in the etherpad and I'm already logged in so it didn't prompt me um, to log in. I was logged in in another window but um, so uh, does anybody need logins or do you guys all have existing accounts that you know how to get into? 
or are you just planning to watch? Because you can do that too. Okay, so Bonnie says she's just watching. That's fine. Anybody else need an account? Well, if it's not an inconvenience, I had to go off call for a moment. But if you're setting up accounts at uh, the hosted long site Xerti instance, I'd love one. Okay. I have a demo account right now um, that I can give you. And then if you want like a, a personal one, I can set that up later. But um, awesome. I, ha I have a demo account. You can log in as um, I'll just type it in the chat here. It's demo uh, 001 is the username. And the password is TLUX23. Okay. When I go to zerte.longsite.com, though, I get to the Ubuntu default page for Apache 2. So is there yeah, a URL? Yeah, you, you have to type in the Zerte toolkits at the end. Here, I'll paste it into the chat. Um, that should get you to the login screen. I'm there. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Does anybody else want an account? Okay, so um, so I'm just going to kind of walk through my process and we'll do a little bit of brainstorming as well because I don't have all of this built out. I just have sort of a few ideas and we'll kind of flesh them out as we go, but I can give you some tips as we move along. So the first thing you want to do in Xerti, once you're logged in, is create, um, you know, a, a project. So in this case, um, I have one that I already created. We'll, we'll just, we'll start from scratch. So we're all kind of starting at the same spot. So um, I'm putting mine in an existing folder. If you don't have any folders, you can just drop it in under workspace. Doesn't really matter um, where you put it in the hierarchy of your directory of, of projects. But, um, but you want to go over here to Project Templates and choose the first one, which is the Xerti Online Toolkit template. That's the one that has the most variety of, of different page types that has the, the types of pages that we're going to be using to create our activity. So I'm going to hit the Create button, and I'm going to call this um, TLUX Escape Room. That's what we're doing today. I, if this was an actual escape room, I would probably come up with something a little bit better. <laughs> but, um, but for now, this is what we have. So once we have this open um, it, or created, it's going to open up in a separate tab. And then we can give it a title. So I'm going to give it the same title, but you could call it something else if you had an idea of what your escape room was going to be about. Um, you could give it a different title. I'm just going to call it that for right now. So we're here at the project level. So these settings are going to apply to all the pages in the project. They're kind of like the defaults for this particular project. Um, so if I have a particular theme that I want to use, like a color scheme, basically I can choose one of these themes down here to apply. Um, and you can preview what, what it looks like um, down here in the thumbnail. So you can kind of browse and see if there's one that you like. Um, it's going to show you a few different kind of style sheets that are in there. I think I'm going to stick with the urban blue. Um, so uh, so that's the, my theme. And if I wanted to change my default text size or something like that, I, I could. Um, You've got a whole bunch of other properties. These are all optional. We don't really need to mess with these right now. Um, but if you're curious what something does, most of these have a little info um, icon next to them. If you mouse over it, it kind of explains what that thing does. So um, what it does is it adds more, for, more fields to the form that you can turn on or off or modify. Um, but for right now, we don't really need to worry about the optional properties at the project level. Um, so then I'm going to add my first page 
And what I did for the Sakaiger escape room is I had kind of a, a title page that had a little bit of a splash screen on it with a background image and then the title of the escape room. Um, so I'm going to do something similar here. So I'm going to add a page to my project. And this is a text page because that's where the title pages are. Um, and I'm going to choose title page here. And if I had multiple pages, it would matter where I put it. But since I, this is the first page in here, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to drop it in to the, um, the outline view here. So this is my title page. And I'm going to call it Welcome. And I'm going to enter um, a title. Well, actually, what do we want to call our room? Escape the... <laughs> I'm not feeling terribly creative. All right. So this is what I have so far. Apologies for my dogs barking in the background. Um, if I want to preview it so far, if I hit this play button, it's going to show me what I've got. So it's going to show me my title page, essentially. And so this is all I have so far. Um, but this is, this is my title page. Now, if I wanted to add a background image to this, um, I could upload some sort of image to put in the background. Let me, um, I'm going to find some, some sort of image here. Uh, there's a truck backing up down on the street. It's making that beep beep backup sound. My dogs hate that. <laughs> um, let's see what would be a good background image. All right, I don't have a great background image for this theme, but I'm just going to pick any old picture. So I have a picture in here that of a solar eclipse, so I uploaded that. Um, obviously, you'd want to have something that was more in keeping with the, the theme of your escape room. But um, for this example, I just put an image that I happen to have. It was one of my desktop wallpapers, I think. So again, I can preview it by hitting play. And it'll show me what it looks like. And so it put that image kind of a, a you know, um, somewhat um, lightened version of it uh, in the background behind the text. So um, and you can choose the level of op opacity if you want it to be even lighter. Maybe your text isn't showing up very well. You wanted it to um, be even more lightened. Um, you can change that, or you can make it darker if you wanted it to, to be more saturated. So you can choose what you want there for the um, opacity. And you can also make it grayscale. If you wanted everything like black and white, um, you could do that. So uh, I don't like the black and white, but it's an option for this one anyway. Um, so you've got some choices here as far as alignment and things since it's filling the the screen the alignment doesn't matter so much for this particular image um, but you can also choose if you want it to stretch or crop depending on it. It, it this is a pretty large image so it's it stretches nicely but sometimes if it's the dimensions of the image are such that it looks better just cropping it versus stretching it um, so you can be the judge as you kind of um, upload that. So the next thing that I did on the um, Sakaiger escape room is I added this introduction property. What this does is it adds a, 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 um, a light box that opens up the first time you view the page that gives you additional instructions and then um, you can have it automatically open when somebody hits the page for the first time. So that was what I did with just sort of some reminders and tips um, in my escape room. Now again, you don't have to do it this way. You could simply just go right into the activity. Um, what I've found with this type of activity is it helps to give people a little bit of um, context on what to expect. So um, that's what I did in this introduction section. So once I click on it over here in the properties, it drops it in as um, some additional form fields. And this is my text area 
where um, I can put some additional instruction. So I'm going to put this is an escape room activity. You have 60 minutes to find oops, all of the clues and solve the puzzles. All right, so you might have more instruction than that. I did for the Sakai Girl Escape Room. I had kind of more guidelines, but you get the idea. So you can set the stage a little bit, um, and you can choose if you want to include the title and the start button or not. You can turn these on or off by selecting those check boxes. Um, right now, it's opening in a light box, and I have it to automatic size, but I could make it small, medium, or large. If I if I wanted to, and um, and I have it set to open the first time the page is viewed, so it's not something that if somebody goes navigates back to the title after they've already gone in, um, they're not going to see it again. Now, if it is something that you wanted to repeat, you could change it to every time the the page is viewed. But this is sort of one time information, so I'm just going to leave it as first time viewed. So again, I like to preview as I go, um, so I can see where I'm at. And then I, I, so I hit play again and it shows me what I've got so far. So this is the light box that came up with the instructions here. And then I hit start. And it takes me to the title page. Um, so I like what I've got so far. I'm going to hit publish and that's kind of like save. So anytime you publish, it means you're saving your project. So I, I recommend publishing frequently um, because with Xerti, because things tend to open up in multiple tabs, sometimes you get a lot of tabs going and you kind of forget where you are. And if you switch into a different browser tab, you may get lost. <laughs> so I try to close browser tabs out as much as possible when I'm done previewing and then um, publish every time I think about it so I don't lose any changes that way. Um, all right, so now um, I'm going to, I'll pause here to see if anybody has any questions so far. I don't want to just kind of keep on rolling. Does anybody have any questions? I'm good. Thank you. See Jennifer typing something. Jennifer says, when I added my image, it doesn't show except in the item. Um, do you mean it's not showing as a background image? Okay. Did you add it up here using the rich text editor, maybe? Like within the, the title area? Is that where you put it? Because you can, um, these are all rich text editor boxes. So you can actually drop in images here just like you would in Sakai. It's a, the same um, CK editor as, that Sakai uses. So you can drop an image in as part of your text. Um, but what I did is I added the background image um, section over here under properties. There should be one called background. And that was the one that I dropped in. And so when I set it here as a background image, it automatically puts it kind of behind whatever text you've got on that title page. So make sure that you use this background property over here. Yeah. Okay, good. You found it. All right. So now the next thing I'm going to do is have kind of my first scene. Um, so for this uh, particular example, I found a few free um, photos and I'll, I'll paste the links in here for you guys if you want to go grab them as well and use the same ones or you could use your own images if you happen to have any. Um, what I did was, um, and if you, if you played the escape room, you'll recall I used those 360 degree panoramic images to make kind of a virtual environment that you could pan around in um, because there's some nice elements that you can do with hotspots on that type of, of page um, type in Xerti um, that are different from some of the hot spots you can do on just a static image. So I like the 360 images for this type of activity because it's a little more immersive. 
um, you feel a little more like you're in the environment and it's it kind of leads the the user to explore a little bit more because they're interacting with the, the view of the image um, now these panoramic images you can find them the, the ones that i used for the the sakai Guru escape room were um, i used i licensed some off of iStock photo we bought like a a bundle of images and I, I licensed a few for that activity but you can also find them for free and that's what I have here let me um I have a, an image it's not perfect but it's great for illustrative purposes so this is off of Pixabay let me paste the link in here for you guys I'm pasting the link into the the big blue button chat um, so that's a link to a um, 360 spherical photo um, that's free to use, no attribution required on Pixabay. Pixabay has tons of images and you can just search. If you try a few different search parameters, you will find a few different um, collections of images. And I found a few. There's not a ton of the 360 images, but you can find some out there. And Unsplash is another site that has um, good free images that you can find. Um, so that's the image that I'm going to upload. So what I want to do next is I'm going to upload, uh, or actually I'm going to add a, a media type called um, 360 image. And um, I'm going to add it after my title page. So this is that panoramic image. And um, in this case, I'm going to call it let's see uh remax office because <laughs> that's the, what the image actually is it's it's a 360 view of like a realtor's office in italy i think um all right so um so there's my and i can put some introductory text up here if i want or i can make it full screen and we'll look at it both ways to decide how you want to do it um so uh, it gives you the option of um, you know the size and where you want the image, and then you actually upload the image. So I'm going to select new scene, and you'll see that it indents it underneath here. And so I'm going to just say, uh, let's see, office. You can call these anything they like it really it's more for you because unless you check this box it's not going to show the title so the title is more for the author in a sense to so you could remember which part of the room you're looking at so here i'm going to actually choose my image so i'm going to select my um my image and upload it so i've already got my solar eclipse in here it's going to drop any files related to this project in this space here and you can drag and drop as well if you have something on your desktop you want to just drag in here i'm going to have to browse for that image because uh, i didn't have it the folder open so let me just grab it all right so here is my image i'm dragging it in there and i'm going to double click to select it Okay, so it drops it in here, and then I enter a description for accessibility. This is kind of like your alt text. So um, I'm going to put 360 photo of Remax office. Okay, so let's preview our object so far. Now, anytime you hit play, it's going to take you all the way back to the beginning. Um, and you kind of navigate through. So I go back to the beginning. I see my little pop-up message. Okay, that's good. So then I can hit next to actually start the activity. And this is what it currently looks like. Um, I had the, remember I, I had the large setting with some text visible. And so this area is the part where you can actually kind of move it around and, and navigate around the, the environment and you can zoom in on stuff um, and you can zoom out 
And you can kind of pan up and down. As I said, it's not a perfect image. It looks a little messy here, but you could probably touch that up in like Photoshop or something. Um, and that was actually what I ended up doing for a lot of the images that I used for the escape room that I built because um, it didn't have everything in the environment that I wanted to use. So maybe I put an image of a post-it on top of the picture so that I could click on the post-it as a clue. Um, so you can use things that are in the, the photo already. Like I could, if I wanted to use this, you know, fire extinguisher, for example, I could just make that a hot spot. But if I wanted something that's not already here, like maybe I want, um, I don't know, a, a purse that's sitting here on one of the chairs that somebody has to open up to see what's inside the purse as, as part of the, the clue. Um, you would have to kind of edit the photo to add that item if you wanted to be able to use it. So sometimes unless you stage the photo really specifically, you might have to do some photo editing to you know, add what features you need for the various clues. So anyway, so this is what it looks like here. Now, the reason I left it on this setting as opposed to full screen is we haven't really set the stage. Um, I could have done that in a prior page. I could have added another text page before I got to this scene here, um, kind of explaining what the story is. Because with an escape room, you have to kind of set the premise. So in this case, I need to let people know, hey, um, you know, you're a uh, receptionist at the Remax office and um, you show up for work and um, there's nobody there or something. You, you kind of set the premise for the mystery that they're supposed to solve. So if you wanted to do that as a sidebar here, you could you could set that up on the the page here. So enter the text for the page. So um, you arrive for work. There is no one there. Where could they be? All right, so again, you have to use your creativity here to, to, to kind of set the stage for um, what sort of escape room you're doing. Um, so for the, the activity we did for the Sakaiger one, I set it up as a a zombie apocalypse kind of thing where Sakaiger had been turned into a zombie and you had to find a cure, right? So I set that up early in the activity. I had a page with an email from Dr. Sakaiger that explained, you know, what had happened with the zombie outbreak and stuff. It kind of got, got the people started. So, um, so that's something you want to think about before you start actually building it, because you're gonna, as Jennifer said, might you wanna map it out um, ahead of time. So if you kind of outline the story, if you sort of storyboard what you plan to do as far as building the room, it's really helpful because it, it, that way you can then plug in the pieces as you go. And if you need to find an artifact for a particular scene, like you need a scene of a classroom or, you know, you want a scene of a, um, you know, janitor's closet, I don't know, whatever places or, or elements that you might need um, to tell your story, um, you can kind of plug those in later. So if you can map out the overall storyline, that's super helpful ahead of time. Um, okay, I do see a few questions over here in the chat. Let's see, Christina wants to know, is that media folder just for the project? Yes, it's just for this one project. So if I have another project and I go to upload a file, I'm gonna see an empty um, you know, resource area because it's a per project sort of space. Um, and let's see if there's any other questions. Okay, that's it for right now. So, um, so now that I have uh, this particular intro in here, now let's just preview it um, as a full screen if, if you wanna see what that looks like instead. So if I change it to full um, and hit play, then you'll see that um, the 360 image takes up the whole screen. So I don't have any room for any explanatory text. 
So if I wanted to use the full screen because it's a little more immersive, and if you enlarge the window, it kind of enlarges the, the view. Um, just remember that if you wanted to do that, you need to have a page that kind of lets people know what's happening, you know, at least gets them into the story prior to getting to this page. So you could do that on just a text page. Um, if I wanted to add a page here, you could add a plain text that explains, you know, whatever it is you want to explain before they get into the activity. You could do that as your title page. You could do that right after the title page. Um, or like I did here, you could just have it as a, a sidebar on the, um, the image itself. So, um, so now that I have my first scene, I can choose the initial view um, by selecting this property here, and then it will let you click to say, you know, kind of where it drops people when they first enter. So um, this, that was the default spot that people land. But if you want people to drop in facing this way, um, you could select this as your introductory view. And you can even select like the zoom level as well. So if you want it all the way zoomed out and sort of pointing back this way, you could check that as your intro view. So that's where when people hit the page for the first time, that's where the camera will be. Um, so another trick that you can do is, I, I, like I said, I like to preview a lot so I know kind of where I am as I move along. Um, if you hit play, it takes you back to the beginning. If you hold down the shift key and hit play, it's going to preview from the page that you're currently on. So as you get, a, as you build more pages and your object gets longer, sometimes it's a real pain to navigate through from the beginning. So it can be really super helpful to have that um, shift play trick up your sleeve so that you can just jump to the spot that you're interested in previewing. All right, so now um, I want to add some hot spots on my image. And uh, so I'm going to add a new hot spot and enter the title. So this is something in my environment that I am going to designate as either a clue or something that I want people to look at, something that I'm going to give them more information about um, when they click on. So I'm going to call this message board because I noticed there was a message board in there that I can use. And um, you can click on this icon here to change the icon if you want the icon to be something else. The info is kind of the default. Um, you also have options to lock the hotspot if it's something where people need to do something before they can actually open the hotspot. Um, that comes in really handy. Um, for this one, I'm not going to make it um, locked. First, I need to edit where I want the, the image, or the lock, or I'm sorry, the hotspot to be. So here's the message board. So if I select the message board, it puts the little info on there. And that's where I want it to be. So I'm going to hit OK. So now it's kind of saved there. And um, I'm going to choose to move to a page when people hit that spot. So it lets me select another page in my project when people click on that hotspot. So in this case, what I want to do is um, have a message that comes up, like it's reading what's on the, the message board. So I need another page. Um, I could do this as an image, but I'm going to do it as a text page. So I'm going to make a plain text page, and I'm going to call it message board text. And again, these titles are mostly for me because I want people to navigate through the actual activity. Um, so I'm going to say message board says that your boss 
is called away. She wants you to show the listing today to a big client. Okay, but it's kind of vague because you don't know which client, you don't know which listing. So you're still a little bit in the dark. Um, so this is going to be um, the, the board message that comes up when, when I click. Now I want this to, um, to happen from here. So I'm going to move to page message board text when I click on that hotspot. And another thing that you want to do if you have things that are sort of popping up out of an image, um, if you don't want people to be able to navigate to that page just by hitting next, 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 which is usually the case in something like this because it's kind of nonlinear, you're, you're navigating through different clues, so they might not click on that first. Um, you want to make it a standalone page. So my message board text, I'm going to make that standalone page, and you'll see it, it changes the icon here so that... What that does is it takes it out of the navigation. Um, so, for example, here I have I have next, and it takes me to the first page. If I hadn't made that other one a standalone, I would have another next here that would just take me to the message without me having to find where that hotspot is. Um, so now I see the hotspot, and I see message board. That's the tooltip that comes up, and when I click on it. It comes up here, and this is my message. Um, and it, it's still got the title. I don't, I don't like the title at the top, so I'm going to go back in and um, let's see, standalone hide header. Yeah, so I want to hide the heading on that light box. And remember that you have the rich text editor in here. So any of these text pages like that, you can add images. You can add. Uh, video, you can embed stuff. Um, so it doesn't have to just be plain text. It just lets you, gives you basically a blank um, drawing board for any kind of, you know, HTML text. And if you know a little bit of um, HTML, you can always go into the source to tweak things if you need to. Um, so I'm going to make this text a little bit bigger. There's a there's some different styles in here. I'm going to make it big there. Um, and I could put a, an image in here if I wanted to, but um, I don't have the image ready, so I'm just going to leave it. All right, so let me publish to kind of save where I am for now. And, um, and so then I go back to my office, and I probably want a new hotspot. So um, let's make a new hotspot, and let's say, uh, I think that's a telephone. Does that look like a telephone to you guys? Kind of a weird looking telephone. All right. So I'm going to make that a hotspot. But in this case, I am going to lock it. And I want to unlock after um, either viewing a scene or entering a password. So this is where this is one of the reasons why I like the 360 image because it makes you, it gives you this option to lock the hotspots. Other types of hotspots don't give you this specific option, um, which I think is kind of nice um, when you have that option for the, for an escape room in particular. So for example, I'm going to say enter a password here, and then I'm going to uh, give it a password. Let's see. Um, zero two zero one two three is the password. And let's see, enter the voicemail password is the prompt. And so let's go ahead and shift play to see what that looks like. So if I click on the phone, it, it wants the voicemail password. So I don't know what that is yet. I need to find it somewhere here. 
um, to, uh, to figure out what that is. So I'm going to enter um, another hotspot. And this time I'm going to, let's see, maybe up here, let's say that, that the voicemail password is listed there. Or maybe I have it like in a planner or something, but, but for now, we'll just say that the, the password is up there. So um, for this one, I'm going to do um, move to page, or actually, no, we'll just do text. Yeah, so it's gonna, just going to show some text. Um, let's see, the voicemail password is 020123, All right? So now let's go ahead and play our activity from the beginning. Um, so we've got our start message. We go to the first thing here. Um, maybe you click here and it says, okay, she wants you to do that. And you click there and you think, oh, I, I don't know what the password is. So you look around a little more and hey, okay, there's the password 020123. So I can go back here now and enter 010223. All right, was it zero two? Yeah, zero two zero one two three. <laughs> I don't know my own password. All right, and then submit. So now it's unlocked. You see that the lock changed, and now if I click on it, it'll take me wherever it is that uh, that I might want to go. Um, so let me let's see. I forgot to do this. So this was yeah phone. I forgot to give these titles and this was the um, uh, I'll call it a bulletin board um, all right so the phone you can either have that move to a page if you wanted to go to another page in the project or in this case because it's a voicemail you might have an audio file maybe you were having audio recording from the, your boss telling you where the listing is and who the client is so if you were going to add a sound um, then it lets you upload an mp3 file now i don't have an mp3 file available and ready to go but i could record one really quick and you know upload it if it was part of this activity um, I'm going to, I'm just going to pick an existing audio file, even though it's not really what um, is called for in this particular. Let's see here. I know I've got some sound files. I think I have sound files. Let me see. I've got some sound somewhere. I probably should have gotten a file ready. I wasn't really planning to do sound. I know I have some, but I'm digging around in my files, so we don't need to watch that. Um, <laughs> Um, so anyway, if I wanted to record something, I could. Um, in this case, you can give it like a, a start and end time. You can, you know, upload whatever and make that play now that you've unlocked the phone. Um, so you guys get the, the idea. So the, the whole premise of a, an escape room type activity is it's a series of puzzles. Um, basically, you want to make each... Um, little mini puzzle in the overall um, activity riddle uh, enable something else. So in my first thing with the message board, I gave a clue of what they were supposed to be doing. And the second one, I knew there was a phone that I needed to unlock somehow. So I'm looking around for a code. Once I get the code, I can unlock the phone, which then gives me another clue that leads me to the next clue. So basically you want to kind of 
um, piggyback from one clue to the next until you actually solve whatever the activity goal is. Um, in this case, getting to the, um, the showing um, on time and with the appropriate information. So um, this could be something obviously that's specific to your subject matter. So you don't have to be limited to just images and um, you know text on a page, but you can also have activities um, as pages in your project. So for example, if you had an activity, um, let's see here, quiz. If you added a quiz as a, an option, so um, you can add that at the end, let's say, and you can, you can make a quiz that tests the user's knowledge about something. So maybe there's um, a sort of a science-based activity that you're building and they need to know the atomic weight of a particular element to solve the riddle but you haven't given them that information in the riddle itself. The person has to go and look it up um, and find it and come back and plug it in. So maybe, um, you, maybe you make a quiz to test their knowledge to see if they know that, that answer. Maybe that's something that they were supposed to study in the chapter for that week. Um, or maybe they need to know a particular formula um, if it's say, a physics course or um, you know some kind of, um, other information, if it's a literature course, maybe they need to know to be able to identify, you know, the, the play and the author, the, the act or the scene. Um, so you can make quiz items unlocking requirements for pieces of your activity. Um, you can also have other hotspots. So in addition to the 360 degree hotspot, there's also this, um, uh, let's see, it's under connectors actually. The hotspot image connector. I'm going to go ahead and add one of these so you can see what it looks like. So this lets you just choose an image. So let me upload um, just a, a regular, not a 360 image, but just a regular um, static image. Here I've got one of a classroom. These are they don't give you the lock option like they do in the other type of file. But they're easier to come by <laughs> because sometimes with 360 images are hard to find. You can actually make them with your phone. If you're handy with your phone, there's a, on most phones now, there's um, a panoramic setting where you can actually like stand in a circle and and take a 360 image so that's an option too i tried it um i, I was only successful in capturing half the room so i didn't i got like a 180 degree picture not a 360 but um but it is possible and they also have cameras now um so uh yeah you can you can do that oh i see a couple of um questions adam had to drop off okay sorry um, Jennifer, anyone using Xerti? If so, do faculty build these objects or you do have IDs do it? Um, it's a little bit of both. It depends on the um, level of expertise that the faculty member has. If they're kind of one of your, um, you know, pioneers that like to get their hands dirty and try things out, they might want to play with it themselves. Um, but what we have found in most um, universities where it's kind of been rolled out in a big way is the faculty partner with an instructional designer to create the activity. And then the ID creates it for them. Um, or with them and using them as a subject matter expert and then hands it off once they're done. So the nice thing about Xerti is that once something is built, it's very easy for a user to go in and tweak it. So for example, if I wanted to go in here and later and change out a photo or, or change the message board text or something, I can tweak that really easy without having to know all the intricacies of building the object. Um, so you can hand it off to a faculty member to kind of maintain their content once it's constructed um, a lot easier. 
So we found that that's been a successful model for a lot of folks. But again, if your faculty member is very hands-on and likes to explore and wants to build their own stuff, um, they can certainly do that. Um, you just have to kind of you know, see how self-sufficient they are. Um, yeah, I could I could totally see that uh, they the faculty could map it out, storyboard it, and then have an instructional designer actually build it um, to save them the the work of doing the the mechanics of it. Um, and Christina asks, uh, would you recommend Xerti Online Toolkit for most items um, or Bootstrap if it's more static content? Bootstrap is more for like a website. So if you wanted to build like a mini website, um, the Bootstrap template is good for that. The Xerti Online Toolkit one is the one you're probably going to use like 90% of the time because it has all the different activities in it. So if you go in here, you'll see all these different page types to choose from. If you go into the bootstrap template, you have much fewer options. Um, so you'll only see some of these and like some of the, the media ones, like the 360 image and the hotspots and stuff, you won't see those in the bootstrap template. Um, now in bootstrap, you have the option to include a page from another project so you can do kind of like an include page but really that's kind of a pain most of the time <laughs> it's easier to just build it as part of your core project using the the toolkit template so that's the one that i use um, most of the time unless i have a really specific need for a more um, traditional kind of website look um, let's see christina says she has faculty is creating oer content for courses um, yeah, Bootstrap is simpler if it's something like if they're doing maybe a, like a module um, that they don't need a lot of interactivity, they're just sort of presenting content, um, then that would that would work. Let me let me show you. I'll open up a Bootstrap template. Um, new Bootstrap. All right, so we'll create one of these. So you'll see here that those are the options you get. You don't get all the different options that you do in the toolkit. So you have basically um, kind of your theme and your navigation. You can put in things like a navigation bar and have a position for it and stuff. Um, you can still have your, your different CSS, but it's, it's made more like a website. So you have kind of a menu and you have some pages, but you don't have a lot of interactive elements. Um, so this would work really well for um, for like a, a lesson on something that you want to reuse a lot, but you're not necessarily going to have a lot of interacting with, um, you know, activities as part of the lesson. Maybe you have the content presentation in, in one object and then a second object where students are actually doing something with that knowledge. Um, but but yeah, it is much simpler, um, but it's more like a, a website builder. All right, well, we are just about out of time. So um, do you guys have any other questions before we wrap up? I know we just scratched the surface on this, um, but you can kind of see the overall idea with escape rooms is that you build them um, sort of piecemeal um, and then you can link to all the different things. The main things to remember are, you know, storyboarding ahead of time is great because that's going to keep you organized um, and you can get all the different media that you need to make it kind of work. Um, the other thing to remember is that you want to use um, those standalone pages so that people can't just hit next, next, next and solve it that way without actually working for it. And then um, just, you know, use your creativity, build a story. You want to use a narrative here to kind of engage the learner. Um, and that's that's the best way to build these kinds of things is to make it a story. So um, any other questions? Did you record this, Wilma? Yes, I did. I was just able to come. I've been with a client. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we'll have the recording available afterward. I'll, I'll send out a note when I've 
got it uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. Did you all talk about Xerti the entire time? Yes. Oh. No. <laughs> That's okay. There'll be other opportunities. Right. We had, this was a by request kind of thing. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I hate it that I missed it. Well, you can catch up on the recording, and I'm happy to answer questions. So, All right, thank you. Um, so hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, this was how to, you know, some of the, the tips for building it in Xerti, but some of the principles are still the same, no matter what tool you're using. So, um, you know, escape rooms are, are, are kind of, you can use any tool to build them. This is just one example of it. So um, hopefully you got something out of it. And do let me know if you guys have any questions or if you want to test it out on our demo server. All right. Well, um, thank you guys for joining and um, we will meet again in two weeks. And I believe, let me see what's on our agenda for that. Uh, we have a Trinity UI feedback session on the 15th on our agenda. So and we might also have a little bit of a recap from um, Sakai Camp during that session. So for anyone who attended, we can kind of get some, some uh, you know, a synopsis of the highlights of Sakai Camp. Um, so hopefully you'll join us in a couple of weeks for our next call. And in the meantime, have a great day.